So welcome back to another episode, and I hope everybody is having fun this weekend playing Final Fantasy VII The Remake. I had a really good time with the game, and what I wanted to do today was come in and talk about my top five moments. But before we begin, I want to say this. I am talking about and showing spoilers for the entire game. The entire game, not a part of it, all of it. So if you don't want the game ruined, please stop watching now. If you've already finished the game and you just want to hear my thoughts on it, please stay around. But there will be spoilers. You've been warned. You have been warned for sure. Now, I want to say that one of my favorite moments in the game is the game. It is honestly the Midgar region itself. And this is not part of my top five. I just want to say that it was so amazing to explore Midgar and to see so much more of it with so much more detail. I was absolutely fascinated running around the city streets, walking around in a big flower garden. That was really cool. I thought they really fleshed the world out quite a lot and it was really neat to see the Midgar region in that kind of way. Yeah, from the slums to the nightlife, it was extraordinary. What are some of your top five moments from this game or from the original? Let me know down below. Okay, we're well, gonna start off at number five here and it takes place in the Shinra building at the end. And you're going up all the levels, kind of exploring the building. And it was one of my favorite parts for sure, but it's when you get to the amphitheater. Oh my God, I couldn't believe the visuals. And I'll, I'll just let a bit of that play right now. Their scripture too has endured. We who are born of the planet, with her we speak, her flesh we shape. Unto her promised land shall we one day return. By her loving grace and providence, may we take our place in paradise. Alas, the ancients themselves are long gone. 2,000 years ago, a meteor brought an end to their civilization. But before their fiery end, did the ancients find their promised land? Even now, we have only to wonder. Times have changed, and the Shinra Electric Power Company is committed to changing and evolving with them. Like the ancients, we've harnessed the power of Mako. When I was sitting there in my living room and that entire sequence started, I just sat back and was like, oh my God, we went on such a journey into the past of this world and explained how everything started and how the Shinro company came in and totally corrupted it all. It's so wild and they do it in such a, a totally normal way that it's like, it makes it seem like it's okay what they did where we know that it wasn't. At number four, this is a very big surprise for me because I started to fight this boss and I was like, wait a second, I remember this boss from 23 years ago. And I'm like, oh my God, like totally. The Hell House, the original Hell House. Does anybody remember that? I'd forgotten all about it. And all of a sudden, I'm in the Coliseum. I think everything is over. I'm like, okay, I finished all the monsters. I I'm done, I'm done in here. And then one more boss, and that was the Hell House, and what a match that was. And I was running around going, oh my god, how do I defeat this thing? I was losing my mind. I finally finished it. And it was so fulfilling and it was so neat because it was something I didn't expect. I hadn't, I hadn't been up to date with all the rumors that are, were out there. So some people knew that the Hell House was gonna be in the game. I didn't, so when it showed up, I 
the nostalgia there really welled up inside of me. Okay, for number three, it's kind of a two-parter for me because it's kind of in line with the quest that you kind of go on. You have to go to the Honey Bee Inn and meet Andre and convince him to help you. And so you kind of go in, you meet him, and he's like, hey, if you want me to help you, you have to dance. And you're like, what? What's going on? And then Cloud dances and you got to press the buttons in sequence to make him do all the right dance moves. And it is hilarious. Poor Cloud was so put on the spot. He's like up there, but I couldn't believe how well he was dancing. I'm like, he picked that up pretty quick. Okay, my next bit is when Andre decides to help you and we get into the famous cross-dressing sequence from the original game. And a, a lot of people were thinking, are they gonna do that You know, from back in the day? Is that gonna be in the new one? And it is, and it is, it is such a good, fun sequence. And just, it, do you know what makes it fun? It's just the look in Cloud's face. He's, he doesn't know what to think. He's like, I, I kind of like this. I don't like this. I, I'm very confused. I'm, I'm a big strong guy with a sword and I'm having to do this to save my friends. And it's a really great moment. And I really loved it. All right, another really cool moment for me, this is my number two choice, was the bike riding sequence at the end as you're trying to leave Midgar. And the boss encounter that you get into is God tier. It is amazing because at first you're just burning down the highway with your friends and you're trying to save them from other Shinra drivers. So you're swatting at them the whole time and, and that's really exciting. And then all of a sudden this boss character comes in. Yeah, and at first I was like, how do I beat this guy? He keeps coming at me. I think I actually died the first time. And then I'm like, oh, I have to hit all of the tires on one side to make him flip to the other side. And then I can take them out as well. And then, then I can wind him down quite a bit. But that bit was really an adrenaline high for me. I was on full cylinder, man, going crazy. I loved it. It's really up there as one of my favorite moments in the game. Okay, at number one, it honestly should be the Sephiroth battle at the end because that was God tier. I absolutely loved it, especially when the music kicked in. It was quite the nostalgia ride way back to 1997 again. And I, I had to hold back a small tear when I was doing that final battle because it was so amazing. It definitely gets a mention for sure. It should be number one. It should be number one because it was that was an unbelievable battle. An unbelievable battle. I didn't film any of it. At the time, I didn't record any of it because I was so shocked at it. I was like, oh my God. And then, but what I want to do is I want to pick a, an unlikely uh, number one, one that I think is really smart and I really love the execution of it. And it's a boss battle. It's a boss battle with the air buster. So when you're running into the Shinra building, you run past this huge mech and uh, you just know that you'll be fighting that mech. You're like, I, I know that mech, I've seen it before. And you're like, okay, when's that gonna happen? And it doesn't, ha doesn't happen until a bit later on. And then, as you're coming back through, what you do, and this is what I really like about this boss battle, is you're removing the components from the robot. The robot's getting assembled, but you're you know, getting in the middle of that, finding key cards to swipe to change uh, what components are going into the mech. So I was trying to get all the bombs out of it. So the bombs are getting loaded in and you're going, nope. And they're getting taken to another room, a disposal room. And so that mech doesn't get those abilities to fight you. So it's kind of really 
cool that you have a say in how you will do the boss battle. I thought that was really unique and something different rather than just get to a boss and fight boss where you can kind of intercept the boss ahead of time, kind of power him down and then take him out at the end through, you know, figuring out what components you don't want him to be armed with. That was absolute, I thought, it, I don't know why, I thought it was so cool when I was playing it. I was like, this is really great. And I thought this would be really great in any game because it's so much fun to kind of get to a boss and do something different before you even fight the boss itself. Change the dynamic up, change the dynamic up. Be offensive rather than defensive when you finally get to the boss. And I thought that was so cool. I tell you, this game was really, really a magical experience and the visuals and everything were just extraordinary and it had some really funny weird little bits like running around the city seeing people doing the strangest things like this is one guy who has this ring and he's just like going back and forth with it and I know it's a cycled animation just to make a character look like they're doing something but I ran up to him and I'm looking at him going what the hell is this guy doing I love it and then some battles where I beat some enemies they're like upside down and it's so weird the way they're laid where their legs are like wrapped over their heads. I'm like, that's really creepy looking. That's really weird. So guys, what are some of your favorite bits in Final Fantasy VII, the remake? I mean, what an extraordinary game. Worth the wait. I think it's worth the wait, but what's gonna be really hard is the wait for the rest of the games. I know there's a lot of people out there that are very upset about that wait and I'm, I'm right there with you in the line waiting for sure, but I enjoyed what we got in this very first game. So anyways, guys, until next time.